Uh, hello. Uh, thank you guys all. Thank you all for coming. Um, uh, I just want to kick this off by thank you. Uh, I wish it were obviously under better circumstances. You know, I wish that we were uh, here tonight getting together like we're all used to for, you know, to, to celebrate, uh, uh, you know, the, the latest Marvel uh, movie opening night. Uh, it's an experience that we've all shared together so many times. Um, but instead, we're here to get together to uh, celebrate a, a real life hero, a real life uh, uh, man who, who uh, meant so much to all of us, uh, Nick Potter, who um, we lost much too soon on January 25th, 2022. Um, if, if, uh, if you've been to an event and I'm in draft house, you know, I'm, I'm not short on words ever, but uh, in this case, I had to write them down. Um, and we're gonna have uh, a few people speak tonight, and then um, we're gonna we're gonna watch uh, Spider-Man No Way Home in celebration of Nick, and then at the very end, we have a special slideshow um, to uh, memorize him and, and celebrate him. So um, essentially, we want this night to be kind of exactly that, a celebration, um, you know, it's, it's it's hard to to get together and put together anything that feels worthy of celebrating someone's life, especially someone like Nick who meant so much to us. But given you know the sudden short notice and, and how much of Nick was a part of so many events and and the cosplay community, the pop culture community, this felt like the most kind of appropriate thing. I know from my perspective. He made so many of those events what they were, um, uh, and um, so many, so many events here, so many comic cons and pop culture events, um, and so this felt like the only way to celebrate him was to kind of come together as a community, like we do, um, and uh, and so uh, yeah, that's that's uh, kind of you know if you attended uh, a comic con in DFW or you attended an event at Alma Draft House or any kind of pop culture related thing, um, chances are you saw Nick, but you maybe didn't even know what he looked like uh, because he was so rarely in a cosplay where he just looks like himself. Uh, this not only is a great photo of him, but one of the only photos that I could find where he just wasn't like caked in makeup and prosthetics. Um, and you know he, he rarely looked like himself. He rarely even looked human. Um, uh, but you definitely didn't miss it. Uh, he had a reputation uh, for having these big builds, like massive uh, builds, Titan builds. He was called the Mad Titan for a reason, not just because of Thanos, but because he literally he saw something that I think most people. Uh, would see on screen and think like, there's no way to recreate that. We can't even create that in in real life for the movie. It's all CG. But Nick had this ambition for those type of builds, and you know, Thanos. It was Galactus. It was Colt. It was Modok. It was Buzz Lightyear. Uh, as I said, like really worthy of of his moniker, Mad Titan cosplay. He was he was quite literally. Uh, a massive talent, um, and uh, but as big as his builds were, his heart was just as big. Um, he used it. He didn't just use it from from the fact that he loved this stuff, and that's what brought us all together. That we all share this love of of pop culture and um, and movies. But uh, you know, he used it uh, for charity. He used it for adoption events. He used it in any way that he could to connect with people and to bring joy to people in the same way that these characters do. Um, and uh, as big as they were, he had an equally as big smile that would fill the room, um, even if he was disguised as, you know, like, you know, comic books, most evil villains. Um, and for me, like seeing the joy that that brought people, like when we would have a movie of it here at Alma Draft House and people would walk in and and not ever expect to see Hulk or Thanos in the lobby, like standing there, gargantuan, looming over them. 
it, it like really kind of brought out the kid in all of us. And that was what he was. It was just, he was a big kid. Um, and and he, he may have kind of gravitated towards villains, but he couldn't have been more the opposite. He couldn't have been kind of more of a hero to people, um, especially on, on events and nights like that. Um, and I think for me, when I think back of, when I think back to Comic Cons or I think back to all the events that we've done here, I don't ever really think about the celebrities or or even really the movies. I think back to like those experiences. I think of being in the lobby. I think of watching those movies together. Um, and Nick was so much a part of that. He just filled the room, not only physically, but just like in his presence and his energy. And I think that that's. We were talking the other day after his funeral, and we and we were talking about why it why it's so powerful. And I think that it's because that's what brings us all together, and it all means something. That we can all come together and not have any idea of who each other are, and that we we cannot know anything about each other, and that we can all be from completely different places with different life experiences, but we're instantly connected in that way. And the way that that is powerful. And the way that Nick was a part of that is is really what it's all about. And um, I just feel lucky to have known him. Uh, I know I didn't, you know, know him as well as as uh, some of these guys who are going to get up and talk. But I feel lucky to kind of have gotten to know him in that way and be connected and share that with him and uh, kind of be in his you know Titan presence, so to speak. Um, and uh, I want to just thank his wife, who's amazing, uh, and and you know has I can't imagine what you've been through. And talking to you the other day, like you know, it's it's so apparent that you and Nick were just the love of each other's lives. And and I always think back to like when Nick would come and do those, uh, and we like correspond through Facebook or email, and I'm like, okay, who's your plus one? And, He's like, oh, well, my wife Hannah, she's going to be my handler. And I, I probably hadn't even asked you yet. Um, but I just remember, like, you in the lobby, always like helping him in and out of these things. Like, you were just always right there uh, with him. And and you guys cosplayed together and you shared it and all that. And, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's evident that as good of a person as he was, he had somebody equally as good right next to his side. So, um, uh, I'm gonna. We're gonna bring these guys up uh, to talk and um, and and kind of remember Nick in the ways that we can and only in the ways that we know how. So uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Robert Everton. Hi, I'm uh, Robert Fancy Shoes. Good, right? I say Fancy Shoes because uh, whenever Nick and uh, Anna first met me, they couldn't remember my name, but. They remember the shoes, <laughs> and it's funny because I, you know, I messaged Hannah right after I found out, and she messaged me back. She's like, "Oh, it comes up. It says fancy shoes. Just I love you." And I was like, "Ah, I'm still fancy shoes." <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who have been to conventions, been to some of our charity events, I am the Woody to Nick's Buzz Lightyear. Um, we. Uh, we did a lot of charity together. We uh, we got to spend a lot of time at conventions together. Uh, we spent a lot of time at Makerspace together. Um, Dallas Makerspace was a space where we would get together and just create things. And uh, Nick was always a planner, always had something going. And uh, it's funny, if anyone needed help with anything, Nick's like, oh yeah, we'll figure this out. We got this, we got this, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. And uh, it's funny because Nick, he comes in, he's like, hey man, uh, I want to do a cosplay with you. And I'm like, okay. He goes, I want to do Buzz Lightyear. Will you be my Woody? And I was like, okay. So, you know, from that, from, from that moment, I knew I had kind of arrived in Nick's world. You know, like I'd seen him, we'd hung out, you know, I helped him with folk here and there. But I was like, wow, he really wants me to be, a part of this world with him. And we had all kinds of plans that we were gonna do. Uh, we were gonna do like Wreck-It Ralph and 
fix it, Felix. We were going to do Fred and Barney from Flintstones. And uh, Hannah and Carissa would always make, Carissa, my wife, would always make the joke that Nick and I make a really cute cosplay couple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but in all this planning and all these things, I, I never doubted Nick's friendship. And I think that is what impacted me the most was, you know, I would, I would call him up and I'd, he'd pick up the phone. He'd be like, hey, buddy, you know, and it was always that, hey, buddy, that kind of stuck with me. And I just, I never, I never had a question in my mind where I stood with Nick as far as a friend goes. He was always there. I'm going to miss him. Yeah, I, I should remind everybody, it, this is a celebration. Uh, this is a celebration of life, and I know it's going to be bittersweet and, and sad. Uh, totally okay to cry, but also totally okay to cheer and to clap. Uh, let's be loud enough where they can hear us. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, um, Jason, my name is Kevin Lewis. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna try to keep it together. Um, I get a little tender hearted, but so first of all, I was gonna make some notes before I came up here to the speech, but I said, you know, the last time I was at Alamo and I sent a speech, it was at uh, Stanley's little thing we did, and I had this long list of notes and sort of going down and Devin got to the point where he came up and I thought he was going to lie to match to my, my sheet of paper because he was like, no, just put it down. So, so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to look at it. So, uh, but, uh, so let me just say this, that, uh, that Nick, Nick was like, uh, kind of like a little brother to me. I feel like I'm one of the older people within the, the cosplay community and uh but Nick, I always felt like um, like he was kind of the little brother that I never had. Um, I always kind of felt it, felt it, but he was very much like that to me. Um, but the one thing about Nick is when I first met Nick, I remember we did an event at, I believe it was in Louisville. And this was before he started cosplaying. And I remember I met uh, him and Hannah, and uh, he was actually responsible for bringing us to the event. And I remember when I met him and Hannah, and I was really connected with him. But the one thing I noticed about Nick is that even though at that time he was not a cosplayer, he had not done any cosplay as far as I know, but he, he had his artwork. You know, he was an amazing, amazing artist, and I don't know if some people know this, I mean, minus all the amazing, you know, uh, creativity that he had in, in, in the costume field, he was an amazing artist too. And I remember seeing a lot of his, his artwork, and I was like, wow. I was thinking to myself, this guy's a very creative person, you know. So that really, you know, uh, you know, stuck out to me. And you know, and then once you know, I, Nick started actually doing cosplay. I mean, I think it was a natural progression for him because he was just, you know, a very uh, creative spirit, no matter what he did. You know, kind of like, kind of like what Robert said and um, James, you know. Uh, you know, he, he had a, a very creative, childlike spirit to him, which I think just kind of brought that out, brought that out in, in all of us. Um, the other thing, too, is that, as is already, already mentioned, Nick had a huge heart. And that was the other thing, you know, we had done so many charity events together. And, you know, I, I can, I'd always just remember seeing Nick's face when, especially when we do charity events with a lot of the kids and stuff, it just, you know, how, how good he was with the kids and just how, um, you know, it just really lit up his face. You know, he knew that how much they enjoyed seeing him as, as you know, one of their favorite, favorite characters. So, you know, that was definitely something that stood out to me. Um, the other thing, too, is that, you know, my wife and I, you know, we, we actually, um, you know, became, you know, friends with Nick and Hannah. And we actually was a, were able to, to host his 30th birthday party and do his party in, I feel like minus the cosplay stuff, you know, there were so many other uh, opportunities I got to you know be engaged with Nick, you know, between you know, obviously the charity stuff, but we, you know, he came out. I remember my wife got hired to do a, a kid's birthday party, and there was a whole thing. 
and and I immediately thought of you know Nick, you know, and, and I said, you know what? I said, you should be all the cool and stuff. And I thought, man, that kid would love seeing Nick in, in this huge Hulk outfit. And I remember they showed up to the birthday party and and you know, poor Hannah, uh, like bless your heart. I mean, she's she's so awesome. And just you know, and they, you know, we got, got the costume in. The look on that kid's face was was priceless, you know. And I think that's one thing that Nick, you know, really drove him with the cosplay and the costumes and stuff is, you know, definitely the adults, the comic cons and all that, but just you know, especially the kids, you know, was, was such a such a huge thing. Um, but you know, all I can just say is that you know Missy, um, you know, I, I love his creative spirit, his huge art, and uh, I know there's, there's a ton of other things I would like to say, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short before I start breaking down here. But I just want to say, too, it's wonderful seeing all these faces out here. Uh, you know, uh, I have a, a three year old, and once my daughter was born, you know, he kind of took a step back. Um, from like you know, a lot of the conventions and a lot of stuff, then you know, of course, COVID hit too. So that really changed things. But it was really nice coming out here tonight, seeing a lot of familiar faces, and uh, and then also just kind of seeing the support for it. So that really, that was really nice. And uh, anyway, thank you very much. I appreciate it. My name is Dan Madsen. I was going to be the oh, guy with the Dan. notes, but I'm afraid Devin's going to burn that. <laughs> uh, and, and Kevin just said a lot of things that I was going to talk about too. But, you know, I was trying to think of things I could talk about Nick. And I don't know if you know this, but Nick is a pretty big deal. <laughs> I want to make sure I see Hannah when I see that, because he would frequently tell her that, uh, what, what a big deal he, he, he is. And he was, I mean, he is a big deal, you know, um, you know, as Kevin discussed, I was at the same event that Kevin mentioned. It was a uh, event in Louisville, and um, he was an artist there. I didn't know him as a cosplayer, and his art was so creative. I mean, who doesn't want a picture of Wonder Woman with the banana? You know, <laughs> I'm like he, he was just—he was a nerd like all of us. You know, he was a nerd, and uh, you know, we we had that connection. And then I found out later that he did the cosplay thing. And I was involved with, uh, you know, gathering cosplayers for the National Adoption Day events. And he was always like one of the first to, um, to volunteer for that. His, his heart was as big as his smile. And, um, you know, the, the, these events were so special because these are events where kids, uh, fam they become families. You know, the kids go to their forever home. And, uh, you know, he just would put smiles on their face. He was there as Wolverine. He was there as Doctor Strange. Um, so, I mean, that we really connected over the charity thing because that's where my heart was with cosplay. And then, um, you know, a few years ago, he asked me if I wanted to go to uh, uh, Austin, or no, not Austin, uh, San Antonio for a celebrity fan fest because he was a guest. And I'm like, of course I'll go. And he invited some of my closest friends. It was such an awesome weekend uh, to be with him. Uh, you know, he, he's a VIP. You know, you know, I'm there as Captain America. He's there as Thanos. We walk into the event and nobody, I didn't have to pay for a ticket. You know, it was free. He's a VIP. So, uh, but, you know, we had such a good time, uh, you know, bonding with, you know, uh, friends and, you um, Got to walk the, the river walk, got to see the Alamo in costume. It was so, so much fun. So, so we had so much bonding time down there that weekend. It was, you know, that's a, that's a weekend I'll never forget, you know, with Nick. Um, I'll make sure I don't forget. Um, you know, I also wanted to just say that Nick was loved, you know, um, he is and was loved. I mean, you know, and I, I could tell he's loved just by the amount of people that are here. You know, I mean, we all appreciate him. We love him and we love you too, Hannah. And, um, you know, I just want to give you all the Wookiee hugs. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's, he's always going to hold a special place in my heart. He was just so creative and so talented, you know, with his builds. I mean, he, he was larger than life. 
I mean, to create that Hulk 10 foot tall, I'm like, I, I saw that. I'm like, eh, I've been in hot costumes before. I'm like, dude, I do not know how you do that. <laughs> but, um, you know, the Hulk, the mountain, you know, I, I have the mountain in my living room and that's going to always be there as a reminder of Nick, you know, every time I, I look at it. But he's definitely going to be missed. But, you know, we're, we're here for you, Hannah, if you need anything. Well, if Hawkeye can wing it, I think I can pull that off. Um, uh, that felt a lot flatter than I thought it would sound. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's great. No, I can't see anything. Don't worry, we're not here. Step, on, step into the lane, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> right. So with Nick, it's one of those things that for most of you that should know by now, and if not, I don't live in Texas. Really? Yeah, right? Northwest of Rose. Winter Rose. <laughs> uh, so I am from the north. So I don't get to hang out with y'all near as much as I would love to, but I don't mind driving and you're always a quick drive away. That being said, I consider my closest friends here people who will come see me when there's not a con. And um, for my one of my 30th birthdays that I've rehashed since 30, um, Nick and Hannah came up uh, and it was one of the, a great night. But I just want to say that I, I think I did the math earlier and I think I've spent over 60 hours on the road with Nick. And my first experience, like we have gone through Silent Hill, we have fought Bugs Bunny, we have fought Iron Man at a con for a boot. Um, <laughs> we have walked into a bar and got a $500 VIP section because he was dressed as Thor. Um, I mean, these have been some fun trips that I could never forget. The greatest moment of that was when no one told me that as we went to love it, Nick has some medical issues. Maybe y'all didn't know this, but I found out the hard way. <laughs> As we're driving through what I consider hell on earth, or, you know, West Texas, um, we're going out to Lubbock. We're going around Kirby Rose. We literally drove through the town that they may have filmed Silent Hill in. <laughs> Meanwhile, my co-pilot may or may not have to go to the hospital. <laughs> and that was my first interaction, with, like true long-term interaction with Nick. That being said, that weekend turned out fabulous. Like so many more would happen afterwards. Um, you know, the whole con was amazing. We had fun at the Airbnb. We met random people who drove us home that were tattoo artists. They showed them his art. They showed them their art. I just didn't want to get murdered in Lubbock. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We uh, we built a shrine thanks to the immediate hop out and throw up on a bush that may have saved Nick's life. <laughs> Uh, that poor bush, like we kept looking at that bush the whole weekend, just going like, hey man, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> Someday you will be a great actor and uh, you've now been thrown up on. <laughs> that's, that's the signature you can get. I was a kid of trauma, so I don't process grief very well. I uh, handle it, it's usually with comedy, but the real being, being as frank as I can, when we were in Burleson on our way back, it started raining. He's like, I want to drive. And I'm like, fine. Like, I wasn't going to argue at that point. We had, been our, we, had, we had made it this far in his hands. I was trusting him. And in this process, I, we just had some of the deepest conversations for the last hour and a half that I hope we didn't total a rental car that I could ever have with somebody. And so while I didn't get to work with him in the makerspace, while we didn't get to go and have ruse all the time, I did get to spend a lot of quality hours with a man that really is larger than mine. We talked so much about building bigger. Uh, hey, buddy, what are you working on now? Oh, this. Oh, are you doing this? Yeah. What about you? Go. Are you doing this? It was constant. Like the time he gave me a 3D print and didn't tell me anything about it. Here's a gun. It's in pieces, Nick. You'll figure it out. I have faith in it. <laughs> Nick, I don't know how 3D prints. <laughs> I'll just sand it and glue it together. What kind of glue, Nick? Oh, you'll figure it out. <laughs> and then finally, he sends me a tutorial after playing with me for a solid hour and a half. So <laughs> he, uh, he got the best in that situation and so many others. There's a story that's so inappropriate that most of you know I can't talk about, but it does involve Alcon. 
<laughs> and I'll say this. It's sad that I never, that I will from this point on, never get to smoke weed with Nick again. <laughs> let's be honest, I couldn't handle the first time, guys. <laughs> I took a four hour shower because it was raining and I went in on that note. <laughs> He was a hell of a man, and there's no tribute that I can't say that can pay an honorable due to him. Um, he's left a great friend, a lot of great friends, a loving family, and people that are going to be more eloquent than me coming up to say the same thing. But he really was a great person and one of my closest friends. And thank God Hannah could drive a boat, or we'd all still be stranded in Lake Texoma right now. <laughs> Okay, I don't know about eloquence, but uh, I've got some things to say. And I think I'm going to start tonight with uh, a few uh, Stanley quotes, just because I feel that they are something that really defines Nick. And so the first one is going to be that I've been the luckiest man in the world because I've had friends. And to have the right friends is everything uh, people can depend on, people who tell you the truth if you ask something. If you're interested in something you do, it keeps you going. You know, you guess one person can make a difference. Um, with that said, Nick was larger than life. Everything he did was larger than life. His bills, his titan, his friendship, his love. He was a husband. He was a, a family man. Uh, he was, <clears throat> that's why we're all here, because he was a friend. Everybody knew Nick and loved him for that. Um, for those that didn't know, when Nick started off, he was a brewer for uh, Rabbit Hole. So he actually brewed beer from home. He had signs and the whole thing sitting out in the driveway. Um, I can only imagine some of these things that Hannah went through that she's like, get this stuff out of here. You know, um, but he then came into the cosplay fold and he started making the builds and he went to maker space. And he talked to all of us, and he learned from every one of us, and he took it, and he made it bigger and better every single time. Um, he started with the Hulk. We went, we built things. He'd call me up, and there's that infamous uh, set of words. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? Uh, I got an idea. Here, here's this random thought. What, what can we do with this? Uh, can we make that happen? Yeah, sure. Okay, no problem. All right, let's do this. Um, and that's what we did. We went on and we built uh, things. We worked on uh, the Hulk. We made some eyes glow for him. We built the Thanos first version one comic book style, uh, made a glowing gauntlet, uh, went on to build the second Thanos, which was the theatrical, where he took it to fan days. And he's like, I want to make something a little bit more about it. And he put the lighting in it, got up on stage, went through the whole process of all of that and went on to the online competition part of that and became a people's champ. That was what Nick really was. He was a people's champ. He's the guy that everybody loved, loved him for what he was, what he did and everything that he did. Um, that being said, he went on to newer, bigger things. Uh, towards the end there, he decided he was gonna go into the acting career. So he took off, he went to Atlanta to be with Anna. Um, he started in the acting and didn't know anything about acting, but by God, he was going to make it. Uh, and he did. He went on. He, he did things like he put in applications for Black Panther 2, which he was still working for. He got a spot in Shazam 2. He was in HBO series. He got to Mike Sophie Turner, which he absolutely loved the fact that we could do that. Um, you know, he, he went on and his biggest thing was he had just signed a contract for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. He called me up and messaged me and said, hey, I got this cool gig. He says, it's top secret. He can't say anything. Um, I said, okay, no problem. Um, won't say anything. He says, I got this contract. I just signed it for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Oh, Hannah's calling. I got I to gotta go, go, got to gotta tell her. <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, 
Um, all of us are here because we know we love the man truly. He's going to live on. Uh, he's now, if you ever got to watch the Walker series on uh, CW, he was in several series of that. Look at the background. Look at the front ground. You're going to find him. He was right dead center on the camera. So with that being said, uh, what I want to do next is I want to grab my glass. And I want to say to everybody out there, raise a glass, celebrate this man for everything he was. He was brilliant. He was bigger than life. And he always will be remembered. With that being said, Excelsior. Excelsior. Love you, buddy. So first of all, Hannah, you are family. You so will always be family. And we're going to remind you of that constantly. So don't be surprised. Um, second of all, I, I kind of want to talk to Nick's nephews who I know are, are up there. Um, just to tell you a little bit more about your Uncle Nick and what a strong guy he was. Not just because of everything he handled since he was 10 years old, but I mean, like, a strong guy. If, if there's one piece of cosplay equipment that I've gotten the most compliments on, it's my Silver Winter Soldier arm. Guess who made that for me? Nick. He called me up and said something, started with, hey, and good buddy. <laughs> and he knew that I had started trying to cosplay the Winter Soldier, but I had basically a jogging shirt that had a screen print arm. And he said, hey, would you like a real Winter Soldier arm? And I said, yeah, he goes, well, just come on over and get one. Just get it, just come get it. Okay. So I went over and he said, try it on. And he goes, oh, wow, it fits. So, Thanks, and he goes, Oh, well, you know, it didn't fit me. So I was why I thought it might fit you. <laughs> <laughs> so I took it like a man. <laughs> uh, one of the times Nick was in the hospital, he was going to be there for a good week. And I was talking to him, and I said, Can I bring you some books? I said, yeah, that'd be great. So I had some, some pretty big collections. I had the Galactus Trilogy. I had some hardcovers of the Hulk, um, one called Hulk the Great that he had never read. It's excellent. And I just I started piling graphic novel after graphic novel in this bag, not thinking how heavy it was going to be. So I remember parking at the hospital and with my wife, and we were walking to the hospital carrying this bag. Okay. Oh, he's gonna love this. Ugh. And then we get to the hospital and check in. We're walking to the elevator, carrying this bag. We're going up the elevator. I set it down on the floor. The elevator opens. I pick it back up. We walk all the way down. It's the Stephen King hallway. It's just he's going. <laughs> Take it all the way in there. I finally get to the to the room and I said, Hey, Nick, I, I brought you these these books. And I'm lifting it up, and he reaches out and goes, Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Tubes in his arms. And just like it was nothing. Your uncle was a mountain of a guy. And, and he gave me this little twinkle smile like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but I'm being nice about it. Um, so that's, that's that humble strength that Nick had. And I think we, we kind of all have encountered that. That's just that gentle giant that, that he was, that's so, so rare to, to come across when it's that sincere, but that was him. And his love for everybody, um, it just makes sense. His love for kids, his love for art, his love for giving. Um, it just makes complete sense from a man whose last name is literally filled with love. Well 
And James, I want to thank you for putting all of this together. And for, I think, probably the greatest gift that you could give Nick, truly a tribute by having a slideshow after the movie. Nick Glover is going to be the after credits scene in the Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I never noticed love thing. I also never noticed that Nick quite literally had glove in his last name. Appropriate <laughs> for Matt Titan Thanos. Yes, we're just all getting that joke right now. Um I think what I'm I, you know what's incredible and, and they've they've literally like thanks in a huge way to the Alabama Draft House because they've literally canceled the movie after this. Sorry for whatever was coming to an 11 o'clock Spider-Man on a Tuesday night, no one. Uh, but uh, incredible that we now kind of have the time uh, to take for this. Do you, would you like to say something? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Tammy Clover. I don't know if you guys know this about Nick, but he was always chasing. He always wanted to have a legacy. Never thought he could ever create it. Never thought he could reach it. And with him being able to see all of this, I hope he knows that he did. And then he has all these friends that love him so much. So thank you all. You know, it's incredible because as I'm standing off to the side, I think that all of everybody in this room knew Nick to a different degree. Um, not just the people that got up and talked, there was a consistency. We didn't get together and, and share our notes. Some of us didn't even have notes, uh, thanks to Devin. Um, <laughs> uh, Damn it, Jeff. But there's a consistency. And, and to live a consistent life in the way that Nick did, where he was, he had a reputation for who he was as a person. That's something that, not everyone can say they have these days. It's something that everyone aspires to. Um, the consistency I heard is, uh, first off, all of us would have like half started cosplays without Nick. I think a lot of our cosplays just started from his discarded cosplays. Uh, <laughs> we're all like walking around like a Megazord with his discarded three friends. Uh, uh, but it, that, you know, that also speaks to who he was, that he, started something for himself and said, you know what, I don't know if this is right for me. Ah, I can think of it exactly who's right for this. Like Robert's story with Buzz and Woody and Daniel's story about the Winter Soldier art. Like he he used that in a way. And and there's a consistency in in that I think if every single person, if we had the time for every single person to get up here and speak, and no matter what way you knew you knew, you would have a, the, a, like a different version of the same thing to say about him. I mean, look around you. There's a theater full of people, and these are just the people that can show up tonight, and these are just the people that live in the DFW. That that he <laughs> or wherever you're from uh, outside. Is there anywhere else in Texas? Some sure. place. Um, uh, but you you and the fact that you traveled in for that 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 he. I I think that. You know, it's 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 incredible. I think that that Nick loved pop culture as much as he did, but he loved people as much as he did. And the ways that he used that, that it took him all the way to acting, and that he got to the point where he was in Guardians of the Galaxy three. I can't imagine a more fulfilling, full circle way to live out your dreams, and that he was just getting started, and and. Exactly what Daniel says. Tonight he will be a post-credit sequence. Tonight he is on screen. Daniel, you said something at the funeral the other day. When Guardians of the Galaxy 3 comes out, we will all be here to celebrate it, not just because we're excited for the movie, but because we're here to celebrate Nick. Um, and and exactly what Hannah said, that he leaves that legacy and that he inspired us and that we will go on and, and in everything that we put ourselves into, whether it's cosplay or, or in any way. Think of him in that way um, and, and let him be a part of your life. And that's how he lives on. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because you think about the idea of cosplay, that people would walk in on an opening night and, and they were here to see 
the familiar heroes that they knew from the big screen. But they walk in and they would see Nick. And in that moment, Nick was those characters to them. It, 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 and the fact that he embodied that, to me, makes him those characters. He was a real life superhero. He may have not had the superpowers, but he certainly had everything else. And he certainly used them in the exact way that a, a hero uses them. And so to me, that is what makes a hero. And I think Nick was a hero. And he's the, certainly the closest thing I've known to a real life superhero in my life. Um, and, uh, you know, it's fitting, I think, that Stan Lee was brought up. The only other time we've had any kind of memorial for someone at the Alamo is for Stan Lee. Um, and so Nick is certainly fitting of this tribute here tonight. Um, and uh, uh, he's certainly on screen. We celebrate him here tonight. I can't think of a better way to sit back and watch uh, a movie, you know, a Marvel movie that he loved, filled with characters that he loved, that he embodied. Um, he's smiling upon us on the screen. He's smiling upon us from the Ray Grove Bridge in Asgard tonight. And um, uh, yeah, so without further ado, a uh, round of applause for, for everyone who's going to make. We will we'll come back to our slideshow after um, and, uh, and remember Nick that way. And then uh, please stick around and hang out on the bar. Uh, that is, uh, from my understanding, a man who brewed his own beer. I can't think of another proper celebration besides watching Marvel movie. The only other fitting celebration is to have a fight and uh, remember Nick in the bar. So uh, they're actually staying open late here tonight. So that we can all hang out in the bar after. So, uh, uh, without further ado, uh, let's give one more toast. One more toast to Nick. Raise your glass. Excelsior. I can't think of a better one. Uh, Excelsior or to Nick. Oh, oh, there you go. There we go. All right, here we go. One, one two, three. Two, three. Oh, all right, here we go. For Nick. <laughs> 